Hello, welcome back to the Spectrasonics Omnisphere tutorial series. That's really hard to say, I fall over it every time. Today we're dealing with sample oscillators. So this is the other way that we can make sound. Last time we looked at the synth oscillator, which is a DSP based wavetable engine. This time we're looking at samples. And the sample that I've chosen to, uh, to use today for, for demo purposes is actually part of the Trillion library, one of the two extension modules that uh, you can plug into Omnisphere, but lots of the same principles apply. So don't worry if you don't, don't have this particular module, but it does have some stuff in it that lets me show you features that regular Omnisphere patches don't. So here we are. This is the Hardcore Funk Slide Up RR. Um, sample RR stands for round robin. We'll deal with that shortly. So we've loaded a sound. We've got nothing else in the patch. I've just initialized the multi earlier. So this is just the sample that we're going to hear and absolutely nothing else. Okay. Now that's a very rich uh, sample library there. That is not one sample that you're hearing, not by a long joke. The way that we can find out uh, what's in it is to press this little plus symbol in the magnifying glass. You'll see these all over the interface. Wherever you see one of these symbols with the magnifying glass, it's going to open up um, a, a sub editing page. And this one gets us to the sound source zoom. They're all called zoom pages for the magnifying glass symbol. And we've got three different sound source zoom sub pages. The one that I wanted to show you right now is the info page and this shows you quite a lot of detailed information about how the sample bank is constructed and here you can see that this is a 2x round robin sound. What that basically means is that every single sample in this instrument has two versions. If I play um, C twice, they're actually different samples that you just heard. Every time you put, press the key, um, it, it plays in a round robin form. It basically chooses the next sample in its bank. So if you had 4x round robin, you could play the same note consecutively four times and hear a different sound every time. In addition to that, we've also got full range multi-sampling, which means every single key on the keyboard has its own sample. And it's not just one sample, sample, it's 5x velocity switch, which basically means every single note on the keyboard has five velocity layered samples, depending on how hard you hit the key. Uh, a really quiet key is a different sample to a really loud key. And all of that is 2x round robin. So basically you've got 10 samples per key. Now, what that all amounts to is an absolutely vast stress on your system. You know, that is a lot of data that's been loaded there. And in fact, your machine might not be able to handle it. Now, I threw, when I started this project, I built a PC that was capable of handling a fairly well stacked Cubase. So I have a lot of RAM and a pretty powerful processor and it's capable of handling it. But if you've if you do find yourself struggling and you're starting to lose samples, then you've got this thinning page. And over here, we can engage basically sample thinning where we can say, forget the round robin stuff, like dis disable it. One note per key is absolutely fine. Five velocity layers per key, no, that's a little bit much. Let's go in and say, well, we'll just have every other velocity or every third velocity some sounds and this doesn't happen to be one but some sounds actually have unique legato samples so if you're actually playing one note into another you get a different sample yet again and this enables you to turn that feature off and finally we can specify specific notes that we want so you might have um, a, a line that you want to be able to play you can enter training mode play the notes that are going to be in your phrase and now it'll only load the notes that are in the pitches that you need. Now you're not going to get silence on the other keys. If I press a really high key you do hear something but that really thin weedy thing there is basically the highest note that I did play stretched. 
it's not actually playing the native note that was originally loaded in. Turn sample thinning off. That's what it should sound like. So have a look in the thin, thin page, this stuff over here, if you find that you, you're struggling a little bit. While we're here, we might as well have a look at the left-hand page. This stuff over here is actually visible in both of these windows. And this is telling you that we've got two different sound sources for all of those. So remember what I was telling you about the five velocity layers and the 2x round robin? Well, it goes even further than that because there are actually two completely distinct sound sources for every single note that we, we play. We've got the Ampeg Amp. I'll turn the other one off for a moment. So we've got that. And then we've got the Direct Pickup, which is that. So really unbelievably deep sampling. This is, this is why Trillion sounds as good as it is. This is the preeminent, in my opinion, uh, live bass VST out there. I've never heard anything that sounds as good as this. You can mute each of the layers easily and you can uh, phase invert as well. Now I'm going to direct your attention to this stuff over here without really going into it too much. This is a little bit, every now and again I reach a point where I say, whoa, right, you win. <laughs> that's, that's too much for me. This allows you to specify individual samples for release noises, pedal noises, piano key damper noises. This sound doesn't happen to use legato, but you could have a legato sample set up. All of this stuff is configured over here. I'm just going to basically going to direct your attention to it and say, if you want to get this deep, here is the stuff for you to look at. But just as an example, we'll have a, a quick look at the release noise. I'll turn it all the way up. I'll make the transition time uh, as low as possible. So as soon as I release the key, we should hear what the release noise sounds like. Now, it, you might be thinking, what the hell is he doing? It's a, a kind of toneless kind of noise. If I just make the release envelope longer and we go back in, It's that thud. And now that I've made the transition time longer, it's carrying on playing the underlying sample underneath and it makes it a little bit easier to actually hear that thud over the sound of me actually releasing the key. Just unbelievably subtle stuff. Let's have a look at these settings down here in the main page. Because I messed around with a few settings while we were having a look earlier, I'm just going to initialize this multi, throw all of that stuff away, and get us back to our basic hardcore funk sound. So here we are. Okay, nice and clean again. Let's have a look at this tamba slider. It's got two different modes, crush and shift. We'll deal with shift first. When the slide is in the middle position, it's not doing anything. It's having no effect on the sound. As I slide it to the right, it's going to transpose the underlying mapping of the samples. On the, so if I'm playing a C2 and I move this timbre slider to the, to the right, it's going to um, transpose the mappings down, but the pitch of the note up. So it will compensate so you'll always hear the pitched note. Now it's basically kind of playing the wrong sample. What you end up getting is that harmonic variation, because it's, it's choosing different samples every time I move this slider, but it's making sure that they're all pitch offset. So to the right, it's shifting the pitch up and the mapping down. The sliding to the left, it's the opposite way around. I press control, recenter the tomba slider, switch over to crush. This is a bit crusher. And again, we have a different um, effect applied depending on whether we slide to the left or right. If we move to the left, we're going to get a low pass filtered um, bit crushing effect. If you have a look in Insight, 
and kind of get an idea of what the frequency distribution looks like. As I pull this slider down, we take the high frequencies away. So we're applying bit crushing, but we're also applying a low pass filter to it. Really cool. As we get to the midpoint and head off to the right, we switch to applying a high pass filter. So now we're going to throw low frequencies away. Also, bit crushing is not just a high pass filter, it's a bit crusher as well. And that is a nasty sound. Control click. The start slider determines where in the sample playback begins. So by default, we get the entire sample. If I bring the start, maybe you, ha you might have a sample, for instance, that's got a, a clicking sound at the beginning that you don't want. You can use this to just basically jump over that bit and begin playback later on in the sample. So what we're now only hearing the end of the played sample, the sample. And reverse is pretty self-evident. It literally turns the entire thing. So where it was an upslide, now that I've reversed it, it's going to be a downslide. There we go. And we get that classic, clearly played backwards kind of thing. So that's the sample oscillator dealt with. So now we've pretty much covered the core functionality of both oscillator types. Now you can see there are six grayed out options underneath and it doesn't matter which mode we're in, these are always available. These are six different processing engines that can be applied to both types of oscillators and in the next episode we'll start having a look at those. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications, You'll be sure not to miss the next one. Hope to see you then.